Hi, I am Dr. Rashmi Chaudhary, the consulted obstetrician and gynecologist in Cloud9 Hospital, Belandur, Bangalore. Vaginal hysterectomy is a surgical procedure in which the uterus is removed surgically through the vaginal route with or without removal of the ovaries. When we remove the ovaries also along with the uterus through the vaginal route, we call it as a vaginal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. There are other ways of doing hysterectomies also like, you know, once we remove the uterus through the abdominal route, we call it as an abdominal hysterectomy. Sometimes we remove it through the laparoscope, then it is called as total laparoscopic hysterectomy. And sometimes we do the laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy in which we take the help of laparoscopic instruments to remove the uterus as well as the adenexus. Before going in detail about the vaginal hysterectomy, I will like to explain you about the brief anatomy of the pelvic organs. Uterus is a muscular pear-shaped structure in the lower abdomen or pelvis and in front of the uterus is the urinary bladder and the anterior vaginal wall and behind the uterus is the posterior vaginal wall and the rectum and the lower part of the uterus is a conical structure which projects into the vagina. What are the why we are doing a vaginal hysterectomy in a female? It is done for certain pathological conditions. The most common cause for doing the vaginal hysterectomy is the pelvic organ prolapse in which the uterus along with the anterior and the posterior vaginal wall as well as the bladder and the rectum, it descends from its normal anatomical position. It is mostly due to overstretching of the pelvic floor muscles and the ligaments. The other causes can be abnormal uterine bleeding, cervical dysplasia or some chronic pelvic pain or small fibroids or any other pathology. Why we choose a vaginal route for removing the uterus? There are certain advantages of doing this hysterectomy through this route. The vaginal route is very easy to operate. The post-operative stay in the hospital is less. The pain is very less or minimal in cases of vaginal hysterectomy and complications are also fewer. But there are certain conditions in which we avoid the vaginal root of hysterectomy, like when we are expecting that the size of the uterus is very big, more than 12 weeks size of the uterus, or when we are expecting moderate to severe endometriosis, then also we don't use this route. And some, if adenixal pathology is suspected, we prefer the abdominal route or laparoscopic way. There are certain complications of vaginal hysterectomy, although it is easy to perform, but there are certain complications. Like, on the table, there can be primary hemorrhage, which is excessive bleeding on the table, which is more in cases of hypertensive patient or if they have any coagulation abnormalities or in cases of long-standing prolapse, where there is a too much of fibrosis, so tissue dissection becomes a little difficult and it leads to more bleeding. Patient in the post-operative period can have fever. It is mostly because of the urinary tract infection. Sometimes if there is a prolonged immobilization, patient is not moving around, there can be clotting of blood in the lower extremities and the vessels. There can be some constipation or some urinary retention. Urinary retention mostly happens because of the cystocele repair or Cayley's plication. What is life after vaginal hysterectomy? The vaginal hysterectomy is normally very satisfying for the patient because the post-operative pain is less, bleeding is very minimal, the sexual function is not altered. But in some cases, some women, they complain of depression, anxiety, irritability or loss of libido. This is mostly due to interference with the ovarian function leading to decreased estrogen production in the body. So in these cases, we supplement the woman with some multivitamin, calcium supplementation and we encourage them for the lifestyle modification, day-to-day -day increased physical activity, walking and also the increased intake of soya proteins and the natural isoflavones.